There we go. Hey, Janet. Hello, how are you today? Very well, how are you? Good, I just finished up the QBO um, certification day one. Oh, nice, how was that? Like three minutes ago, it was good. Good. Yeah, it's, I, years ago they were doing um, like almost like a road show. They were coming to, they would do mm -hmm. just presentations in hotels in the area, specifically for QuickBooks Online Advanced Certification mm -hmm. Training. And it's funny, I went really more for the networking, just to like say hello to people. <laughs> but I, it turns out I learned a lot of cool little tricks while I sat in on the, uh, on the session. Yeah, I have to do the core certification test. I've got three sections that I didn't pass the first time. So I've got sat through the core stuff today and I'm going to take that and pass, hopefully pass those tonight. And then tomorrow I'm going to sit in on the advanced modules gotcha. to get that certification because it got all running at the same time. Right. All right. I actually let my QBO certification lapse. I just don't have time. That's what happened to mine too. Yeah, I um I took it once and I didn't pass and I took screenshots of all the questions and my answers and then you know how then they give you the kind of feedback where they don't tell you the question but it's pretty obvious what the question is and I was like I, I and then I took screenshots to confirm that my answers were correct even though they told me they were wrong you know and it's not it's because sometimes there is a correct answer but they want the best correct answer mm -hmm. and it's like you have no way of knowing what that is cuz it's trying to get inside the minds of the people who wrote the test and at that point I was like yeah, I don't have patience for this. I don't have time. I'm, I already know what I'm doing. I know how to handle QuickBooks Online for people. And I actually, I made some of my friends at Intuit mad when I did this because I, before anybody, because I know how people kind of talk. And so mm -hmm. if word got out that I didn't pass, people would say something because I've had people say things to me about others in the industry. Oh, did you know so-and-so didn't, isn't certified? And so before anybody else could do that, I, uh, I went into the Facebook group accountants well before it was called accounting business academy and i just posted a comment saying hey by the way i didn't pass you know just in case anybody's wondering or cares and uh so i guess it's back to my youtube channel to prove that i know what i'm doing and and uh i got a call from from somebody into it saying uh you know we need to talk you know when you post things like that and i said and i was actually surprised what the actual issue was but apparently the people specifically who were upset by it was the YouTube channel comment um, because they felt it took away, it was, it was the people who were involved in actually writing the exam questions who got upset by that comment of mine. You know, like they felt it undermined what they were trying to do. And I was like, well, it's my truth. You know, mm -hmm. my YouTube channel, I think abundantly confirms that I know what I'm doing. I don't need a test to prove it. And I don't have time to sit there and try and figure out what's in their minds in terms of what answer is better than the one I came up with when both the answers are right, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't have time for trick questions. It's just, it's a waste. It's, it's not, I, I don't think it helps anyone. You know, if I can get to the answer that gets the right result and I can probably argue with them why my way is even better than their way, according mm -hmm. to what they think. So anyway, that's probably my ego getting in the way, but it is what it is. <laughs> well, I figured I might as well just go ahead and do it since I'm the QuickBooks online expert at the firm I'm working at now. Oh, that's right. You told me that. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so for that kind of purpose, then it makes sense. I mean, years ago, I did it originally, even though I hadn't done it ever, when I was invited to join the Trainer Writer Network. And after a very long conversation with Allison Ball at Intuit, you know, where she was kind of telling me about it, I was, we were like about to walk away. And I was like, by the way, I guess I probably should be certified <laughs> if I'm going to be in the Trainer Writer Network. And she's like, Maybe. I just assumed you were. I'm like, no. You know, and that was when I told her my old kind of classic sort of joke slash comment. I said, I said, I've always relied on my YouTube channel for, to be my certification. I literally, in those days, I would tell people that on the phone, they would ask me, oh, are you certified? And I'd say, no, go look at my YouTube channel. I think you'll get your answers there as far mm -hmm. as whether or not I know what I'm doing, you know. And because I'd always said I would get the certification if and when the need arose, mm -hmm. you know, such as my business is slow and I don't have clients and I need it to help me attract more clients that day never came or, uh, or some other reason why I just needed to have it. Well, now the need became operative because I needed to, to justify my existence in the trainer writer network. 
and that was years ago. And now I no longer even need it for that purpose because all the years I've been in the Trader Writer Network, it's cool, it's prestigious and all that, but I've done nothing with it. I've had no time to do anything with it, so. I'm hoping to use it um, eventually when I branch out again to just kind of the free advertising on the ProAdvisor mm -hmm. Network. Yeah, no, it's great. A lot of people have built whole businesses on that. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying people shouldn't oh, yeah. do it. Yeah. yeah, I absolutely see the, the value in it for a lot of people, just not for me. <laughs> you get your own niche. Mm hmm. And apparently I'm a camel today. This is my second bottle. But I just had something very salty. Okay, so small group today, probably because I forgot to remind everybody, which is fine. Um, but I did notice that a few people filled out my magical ClickUp form. So let's go see what the questions are. I have to see. I also gave people in that form the opportunity to say which particular date they wanted it answered on. So I'll see if, if the questions that came in are applicable for today. Um, where is it? Bulletproof bookkeeping. Um, nope, I know where it is. Sometimes I'm too organized for my own good. And then click up. I hate when it delays. Like I'll click on something and there'll be a delay and I'll think it didn't respond. So I'll click again. But then by the time that click goes through, it's moved and I'm actually clicking on something I didn't mean to click on. Anyway, there it is. Bulletproof bookkeeping webinars. Mm -hmm. Click up a slow today. Okay, so I need to know. All right, so let's see. The first question I have here is from Annette, who is with us today. Perfect. I don't see the date. Okay, so I assume it's for today. Annette, you're there with us. Uh, yeah, I did not put the date on uh, because I didn't know if it really has too much information regarding the company that's my client. Oh, I oh, because I see you attached an Excel file for me to look at. All right, there's no viruses in that file, are there? <laughs> yeah. No, there are no viruses. I kid, I kid. <laughs> Don't take me seriously. You have to know when to take me seriously and when not to. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's take a look. And so the question is, owner wants to reduce payroll expenses. We've tried unsuccessfully to negotiate a lower rate with our current payroll company. Sue, you just got here. You're leaving us already? <laughs> You're muted. I can't hear you. <laughs> so, Seth, the question is really about recommendation. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the question is, the central question is a recommendation for a payroll company. For I see. <clears throat> what are you using right now? And we first use Wells Fargo, and they could not handle our certified. Um, oh, you need certified payroll. payroll. Uh, yeah, and then they also were not available for questions. Now we have payroll network, which is, which is uh, a full service company in the Washington DC area. They're okay. marvelous. They're always available for questions. But they charge us a fortune as close as the amount. I'm guessing and because it needs to be certified payroll that it's going to be expensive no matter where you go. Okay. Right, because you're, it's, it's an extra service somebody has to provide to get that payroll certified as opposed to just running payroll, which is already hard enough to do, right? Yeah. <laughs> I believe Gusto can do certified payroll. But that's the question you have to ask when you inquire with the payroll service. <clears throat> but I feel like I remember somebody saying that they can do it. Off the top of my head, I can't personally recommend a company and say, I know this company is great for this and that they're reasonable. But I have a good friend whose name is Penny Lane. You may have heard of her who specializes in the construction industry. And I'm certain that I can put you in touch with her and that she can help you find somebody. Oh, that would be wonderful. Yes, please. Yep, I will yes, most yes. definitely do that. I'm just going to make a comment here and add it as a follow-up for me. If I can get things out of my way. Where are you? Go away. Um, okay, so I'm just going to write a comment saying introduce to 
Penny Lane. I need to talk to her about something anyway um, regarding certified payroll. Okay. All right. So that was easy, actually. Yes. Thank you. Thank <laughs> You're you. very welcome. Um, I just have to park that one so I don't forget to follow up. Okay. Next question. Who is this from? It's from Sue. Look at this. Everybody's here. Yeah. All right, Sue, you ready? I'm going to read this. Yeah, it's long. And I talked to Seth's aunt today on the phone. Okay, good. Yeah, their support's been great. I haven't had to use it a lot, which also speaks to the quality of the product. But when I have needed their support, it's been very good. Um, all right, so let's see. I want to move the current file to another QBO company. So we're going from QBO to QBO? Yep. Okay. And this is, the, I assume, the same situation you've been talking about in Slack? Yeah, I've really okay. messed up. Okay, so the items are all one-sided, and they need to be two-sided to work with purchase orders. I've done a lot of testing in my fake company. Um, I tried fixing the list in Excel and re-importing to my fake company. QBO does not like inventory items to import. It says they map, uh, it says they, I assume you mean it says they don't map correctly. They don't map correctly. Yeah, that's complicated. You have inventory. to, if you're in inventory, if you're importing inventory, obviously you need to make sure that we, we've got to map the asset account, we've got to map the income account, and we've got to map the cost of gets sold account. If yeah, these are non-inventory. That's what's screwing it up. It acts like it's inventory. Oh, it does not like non-inventory items. That's weird. Yeah. Have you tried importing them as service items? Because then you can convert them from service to non-inventory. Ooh, but then I got 200 and some to convert. That's a lot I think you might be able to do it as a batch. But I, So I'm wondering why the, there was an issue, though, with non-inventory. It seems like it should be easy. What was the exact – so you, what, it was just telling you it couldn't map them? It made me change them all to non-inventory individually. I sent you a picture. It – it said it all mapped, but then it but they came. Made me so how'd they come in as inventory? Um, they came in red. Oh, so and it just wasn't. Oh, interesting. And what did Sassan support say? Well, they just said that they could help me. Um, well, because I have to do change all the invoices. Those are all messed up. Um, and I have to redo the whole item list. So they said I could do all those things, export the current invoices that have about 30 items a piece on it. Uh -huh. And I got to do all the, redo all the estimates and redo all the invoices because she put sales tax on it. She's not supposed to do sales tax. State okay. of Michigan does not like contractors to do that. It's okay, so I'm looking at your screenshot here. What I think I may want to try to do since I think there's only like one other question anyway for the day, is just uh, open up my sample QBO company and, sa and link Sassan to that in my account. And we can play around cool. with some imports to see what happens. Yeah. I want to so, see how you import an invoice. <laughs> um, all right, so this is a screenshot of import with, uh, with track checked, even though... All right, well, if you're doing non-inventory, we can't check off track because tracking is for inventory parts. We can't track quantities with non-inventory, right? Right. So tracking would have to not be checked off if we're trying to do a non-inventory. It comes in, even though I put non-inventory, it comes in checked off. I've tried it. I tried it several times. It just comes in screwed up. Okay. Um... I saw on YouTube another person was saying that. Okay. About three times, three different people I heard said that. All right, and then let me just look at your other attachment here. And all right, let's see, what have we got? I have. I'm just looking at my at the uh, Excel file. So we have the product or service name, and you use the colons to denote a sub product, but you have to have the parent product first. I think I replied to you to that effect just to make sure. Um, we have the type non inventory. Yeah, and you know, sometimes it could be that it's very particular. I learned this once with Sassant. It wasn't that I was choosing the wrong type, like non inventory, but you know how you have it called non dash inventory? It could be that it needs it without the dash. It could be that I it needs it. it. 
both ways. So you tried it that way too. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cause I had something just like that a couple months ago where I ended up on the phone with support and their documentation was inaccurate. And cause when I went to support, they said, Oh, and they looked at my father said, Oh, here's what you need to change. And I linked them to their documentation. I said, that's not what this says. And so they thanked me and said, we need to fix that. So, so all right. So you definitely tried it both ways. Yep. Um, okay. And we have the income account and we have the expense account. Okay. And the quantity as of date, but again, there shouldn't be a date if it's not inventory because there should be no quantity, right? Yeah. So, all right, let's play around. Let's play. I'm going to just give me a bear with me here for a minute while I get things set up. Um, Cause I need to see, I don't know if my sample company has been connected to Sassan yet. So I need to check that first. So. You know, every the category, the subcategory and the sub subcategory. Well, I, really you're well. you're cutting out. Well, it... I'm having trouble hearing you. And I think you froze. She's frozen. I'm going to start singing, let it go. Oh. <laughs> I didn't get enough sleep last night. So I'm in like rare form today. Wait, Oops. I think you're back. <laughs> Are we back? No, my internet went down at home. So I had to go to the shop and it's not and right now, here. Either. And see, so. see the internet goblins followed you to the shop. Those mm -hmm. goblins. One thing I'm very grateful for is when, uh, when AT&T first offered the fiber optics with the super high speed internet, I was like one of the first ones to get it. And I happened to call on the, literally the first day it was available. They said, we haven't even sent the email out yet, but it's available. And so I was able to get somebody here like within a day to install it. And, oh, from, that's so cool. and so I get a gig up and down on my internet. And then I've made, I've known for a long time, I always hardwire my modem right to my computer. So I actually get that whole bandwidth out of it. It's pretty cool. It was really cool to see how fast a video file would upload, you know, cause like an hour long video used to take like 20 right. minutes. Now it's uploaded like in two minutes. <laughs> It's crazy. Ah, uh, that's cool. That's just not even fair. I'm on DSL and the modem is in the ceiling, so it has to be Wi-Fi. <laughs> that's horrible. Yeah, I, and I could not imagine going back to the old way. I get spoiled even if, like, if I've gone to a hotel, and I, you know, and even at hotels where they usually have pretty good internet, you know, it's nothing compared to what I'm used to, and I'm just, I realize I'm just totally spoiled. All right, so I'm logging into SAS, and I got to make sure I've got one connected to this company. Mm. All right, let's make sure we are still connected. I did have it linked up, but every once in a while you got to go back in and re-authenticate. Yep, see, it's asking me to connect again. Connect to QuickBooks. All right, almost there, folks. Bear with me. And this is always cute when the pop-up window ends up being larger than the whole state of California and I have to keep moving it and resizing it just to get to the information I need. And let's see, what do I want? I want me. Okay, I don't know what's happening. Oh, nothing was happening. Okay, let's get Sassant in here. Okay, so let's play. Let's go to my products and services list. And by the way, one thing you can often do, see if you can do it from here. Yeah, so if you go here and you choose import, you can get like a sample template. 
that kind of tells you what it needs to look like. That's if you're going to import it directly through this module, not for SASINT. It may work differently in SASINT, but it still should give you an idea. It's always good to look at these things. So I'm going to download that real quick just to take a look. And they're pretty good about this because they give you kind of examples of each different type. And I'll show you something interesting, Susan. Because according to this, non inventory needs to be all one word like this. I know you said you tried it both ways. Yeah, I tried it. But I'm going to test it both ways too, just to make sure. So, um, so they give you kind of a, an example of each different type service inventory, another service. And so we'll see with non inventory. Yeah, there should be no date here. Obviously, no inventory asset account. All right, so this just kind of gives me an idea. I'm going to put this off on my other screen. And we're going to cancel this. And so, and I always take the time, even if I feel like I've done this a million times and I'm like a superstar at it, I still just always take time to kind of go through these things and check and prepare. Sometimes they change things, you know. If it's a Tuesday at three o'clock, there may be something else we need to do as opposed to Wednesday at 12. It's QuickBooks, so we have to expect that anything can change at any time without notice, <laughs> all right? So I always just kind of poke around a little bit, no matter how good I think I might be at this. Now I have some sample items here because this is my sample file I used to make videos. So we did a video on, um, we were hiring Baby Yoda for a Death Star destruction. That was fun. We paid him a lot of money for it too. Um, so first what I'm gonna do is let's go new and let's go non-inventory, right? And it says something's not quite right, unexpected problem. Great. Thank you, QuickBooks. So let's log back in. I'll stop my screen share for a minute so I don't inadvertently share client information. Uh, all right, go to that, that, and that. Okay, and we're back. Okay, let's go back to my products and services list. New, non inventory. Okay, so far so good. Bada bing, bada boom. We're going to want to do purchasing information because you said you needed it to be two sided, right? So sometimes I just keep this open on one screen while I'm prepping my import just to make sure I understand because all these fields need to be the columns in my import file, right? So let's just build an import file. I'm gonna open up a blank Excel spreadsheet. Um, I'm gonna actually close that template. I want a new Excel file. Uh, there we are. Okay, so start from a blank. Let's move this up to my other screen. And so what do we need? We need the name, right? And actually we need the type. I'm gonna put the type first actually. Type, name, skew in case we want that. Um, we'll skip the category, we'll skip the class, right? Income account, expense account, Uh, I probably want tax, non-tax, right? Were any of your items taxable, Susan, or were they all non-taxable? They're all non-taxable. Okay. Except they're all in there as taxable. Yeah, well, that's why I want to we want to confirm how to make it non-taxable, right? So, and what I do, by the way, is I look, what does it look like in QuickBooks Online? I assume that's the starting place for how to, market so the word is just non-taxable and I just do things as literally as I can because that's often how these things work so it's non-taxable with a capital N right it could even be that when you did non-inventory you know I don't know if you capitalize the I in inventory but maybe you can't right maybe it mm -hmm. has to be because theirs was it was lowercase every little thing like that can make a difference so we're going to test that all out so it's non-taxable with a capital N 
let's just put that in there right now. Actually, what I did was is I exported the list I had, fixed it, and re-imported it back in. Yeah, then it should definitely conform if you took it out of QuickBooks Online and you're putting it back in that way. But like I said, I did run into a situation with Sassant where it was different from what their documentation said, and it was also different from, from that. So ultimately, it has to conform to what Sassant needs because that's who's grabbing the data and then moving it into QBO. Yeah. I'm so, excited to learn to use Sassant. It looks like it's, it's a, a great little, tool. It yeah. has, let's put it this way. When I think about the time it has saved me doing cleanup jobs, it has made me so much money. You know, just because you can still charge a lot, just because you have a tool that's helping you get it done in a fraction of the time it would otherwise take, doesn't mean the client should get that benefit. You should get that benefit, right? You're learning how to use the tool. That's why I don't charge by the hour. I, I was just in a Facebook feed the other day, and it's from a group that is primarily comprised of people who are beginner bookkeepers. And it sort of showed because they were all advising this person to charge hourly for a cleanup job. And I'm like, no, please don't, don't charge hourly never you will lose money on that you might think you're covering yourself and making money but the truth is if you're using tools like sassant you're going to be able to get the work done in a fraction of the time and that is when it's actually costing you money to get the job done more efficiently the benefit to the client is they get the work turned around a lot faster the benefit to you is by charging flat rates you get to make a lot more money in a lot less time and you don't have to work so hard all the time so that's the deal. All right. So type for type in QBO, it is non dash inventory. I know you said you tried it that way, right? I tried it both ways. All right. No, I believe you. I but believe I don't know. You. Maybe I spelled something wrong. You never know. <laughs> yeah. Or like I said, it could be you did non and you took out the dash and made it a capital I. And, and you know, again, it's maybe it'll make a difference. Maybe it won't. No guarantees. But I always try to be as literal as I can possibly be. All right, so let me look at your file and just kind of grab a sample out of it as I'm building this. So let's go here and I'll put that on my other screen. Uh, it's just, that's the way it's going today. Everything when I bring it to my other screen turns out to be larger than California. Okay, where are you? Um, question, not inventory. There we are. All right, I'll put that on my other screen. Okay, so we're going to do two rounds of import, right? Because in one, I need my parent items. And then once I've got the parent items in there, I can do the sub items. All right, so we're dealing with one parent item for now. And actually at that point, if it's one parent item, there's no sense in going through the trouble of an import. Let's just add that one in manually. By the way, I don't know if you wanted this in all caps like this, but in case you don't and, you, and you're like me and you don't like typing stuff, equals proper gets it properly capitalized in two seconds. Janet, you didn't know that? <laughs> Control C to copy, right click, paste value. Boom, done. So that's how you can very quickly get things properly capitalized so it doesn't feel like people are yelling at you anymore. I love that command. It's like one of my favorite dumb commands in Excel. I, I call it, there's like a category of commands that I call dumb commands because they just do like dumb little things that make a huge difference. All right, so we're going to manually put perennials grasses in there. And then I'm going to grab one of your sub items here. Okay. So one thing, and of course I get that it might just be the way it is, but when you start putting extra characters in there, like the single quotes, things like that can possibly screw it up too. You just never know. I mean, it should be fine, but I try and avoid special characters and things like item names. It's funny. I was doing something to be silly with this very, uh, sample QuickBooks Online file that we're working with now. And I, um, I figured out that you could put emojis in the title of an account, in the chart of accounts. So I put like flying money, dollar wings in the bank account names. 
And then I was trying to do a video on Giraffe, the forecasting tool that I use, and Giraffe was giving me these errors. And I, had a, I couldn't figure out what was wrong. And I, I went to Giraffe support. I'm like, guys, I don't get it. I don't know why it's suddenly not working. And they had to kick it over and create like a support ticket. And it was funny. It was almost a little embarrassing. They got back to me and said, yeah, the problem is you have emojis in one of your account names and that won't sync over. <laughs> Just like, come on, it's, it's 2020, we got to have emojis. Can't survive without them. Anyway, that was funny. Um, the skew we can ignore for now. I do, generally speaking, like to have to use skews. They just kind of have a way of coming in handy. Always at least three letters, by the way, in your skew. There are some apps that I've worked with that if you don't have at least three letters, when you try to type in a search or a drop down, it won't find it if it's got less than three characters. So. Another little tip. All right, let's see what income account shall we use today. I'm gonna to call it sales, keep it simple. Okay, and again, I'm gonna manually add this one in because when it's just one, it's kind of silly to import it. Sort of like bringing a tank to a knife fight. Let's go in new. Wait, did I already add it? No. New non inventory perennials income purchasing. What did you use for your expense account? Uh, expense account was material costs. Okay, I can get with that. Actually, I think I had to take out the apostrophes before it would import. Uh, it gave me a red thing. Yeah, I could see that creating problems. So, all right, yeah. I'll take that out. Thank you for that. I think it did. I'm almost, yeah, I'm 100% sure it did. And what does the little R mean? So I often look at these and obviously I have no idea what these products are all about, but I always look at these things and like I always, I try to keep my names really simple if I can. Do you know what that little R period is all about? Okay. No, it's just a type of plant. Okay, fair enough. All right, and then everything's going to go in as non-taxable. Um, let's see, what else did you have that I might need? I don't care about the quantity. I don't need a reorder point. I don't need an inventory asset. I don't need a quantity as of date. I do want a sales price. Let's do a sales price. Okay, and so this particular one was $8.70. And then let's add in one other. Okay, and again, we'll get rid of the single quotes. Copy that down. Copy those down. And uh, this one, actually, I put that on the wrong line. This one goes away. And this one is $9.20. Okay, so again, if, if it works for two, it's going to work for them all, right? So. Right. This is just to do a quick kind of test. So let me just save this, file, save as, uh, this PC, more options, my drive, fun with QBO, mm -hmm. .xlsx. Okay, so I'll bring this back up onto my other screen. Let's bring this back in, double click, close that. Let's go to SASAT now and let me open up the folder so I can drag the file. And fun with QBO. Down. And submit. Okay, so what are we doing? We're doing lists. Uh, products and services. How about that? Okay, the type is going to be the type. And it shows you here a type, basic type of this item, allowed values. So it's non with a capital N, inventory with a capital I, one word. Right here, it tells me what that has to be structured like. So let me go back and fix that. All right, so let's go back to fun with QBO. And we'll see, it may still not work, right? But I am trusting in the process.
So none with a capital N, inventory with a capital I, no space, no dash, don't pass go, don't collect 200 on it. All right, so clear uploads. Fun with QBO, come on. Don't mess with me. Okay, and submit. And products and services. And so you see how it says the sample here, by the way, pulls from your data file. So you can see exactly how it's coming in from your data file here. This is one of the things I love about Sassin is they've really taken the time to make your job very easy when you're mapping stuff, right? So now I've got a conforming non with a capital N, inventory with a capital I over here. They're giving me the example allowed values, non with a capital N, inventory with a capital I. So in theory, and I stress in theory, this should work. Okay, name, we've got the name. Um, I did forget to put them in as a sub of the parent item. So let's go back. And this is the process, by the way. When you start doing this, this is exactly what you're gonna go through. You're gonna, you're gonna go through probably six iterations of what I'm doing right now before you get the file right and get it ready for import. The more you do this, the better you get at it and the fewer iterations it takes, right? Because I haven't done an import like this in a really long time. So now I'm starting to remember, oh, duh, let's go. And by the way, that's why I leave the file open. So I can go right back in here and for the name, we can do, and I wanna make sure that appears exactly as it now does in QBO. So let's go here. Yeah. Wait, where did it go? Do I have this filtered? No, I'm sure I created it. That's weird. All right, let's try it again. New, not inventory. Uh, that's really weird because I remember I had even properly capitalized it. So, oh, I know what I did. Hold on, we're gonna back up. There it is. So, I guess I never did add it. I started to and I distracted myself. So, that goes there. Income account is sales, that's fine. We'll use purchases, save and close. All right, now we've got that. And what I'll do when I'm setting this up is I'll click and drag here and press control C. That way there's absolutely no question that I'm getting it in its proper form, the way it appears in QBO. And then I'll go in here. And again, let's uh, wait. Yeah, let's close this and reopen it without saving changes. Then I should be able to get back to what I had. Okay, good. Name, I'll just click inside the formula bar so I can paste what was on my clipboard, which of course didn't work because I closed it. So let's go back here. It's still highlighted, control C, click back into there. All right, colon, no spaces. It's gotta just be a colon with no spaces to designate parent versus child. Okay, and that should work beautifully. We'll save that. Let's go back over to Chrome over here. Let's go back and clear uploads. Whenever you make the changes to the file and save it, you have to clear the uploads and start all over. It's not gonna recognize the changes because that copy of the file is up on their server. It doesn't know what you're doing on your computer. Okay, so we'll drag that back in. Products and services. Okay, and by the way, when you set up your columns well, see what happens. I don't have to do any mapping. It, it figures out the mapping for the most part on its own. We're still gonna review and confirm everything, right? And it shows here, it's got my sample. There's perennials and grasses, colon, child item, right? Uh, there's nothing in here, but it obviously recognizes which column is for the SKU, the income, the expense, all right? Taxable, this may give us an error. I don't know, it says sample non-taxable, all right? Taxable if true, 
So I might actually have to say true or false. I think I might, I think it might be a true false thing. You're nodding, Sue. You're, you're confirming. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I've... go ahead. Oops. False. I don't know why it's centering that. Oh, I know why. Because Excel has a command thing around the word false. Let's try and make that properly capitalized. OK, it's, no, it's just not going to play well. What if I do it like this? I just don't like that it's forcing all caps on me. Because Excel has a designation where you can, you know, deem something to be true or false. It's a logical expression, and I want to make sure that it's just reading it as text. Yeah, that works. So sometimes you have to format the cells. Because if it try to import it as all caps and it doesn't want to take it as all caps, then again, I might have a problem. So just keeping it simple. Let's go back over here, and we cleared our uploads. And one more time. I think now I think we're ready. I think it's gonna work. I have confidence. Products and services. Type name SKU, income expense, taxable, sales price. And you can often just type what you're searching for and find it. But it's not always, like sales isn't gonna work, so we need, maybe need price. There, price rate, unit price of the item, right? So that's a fast way to do the mapping instead of having to just search through the whole list. And on the left, again, it's showing me all my columns that are in the Excel file. So basically the process is just make sure that everything that's in the Excel file that you need mapped somewhere in QuickBooks Online is accounted for. If it's not something you need mapped, that's fine. Then just don't map it, right? Okay, and by the way, for the tax bill, once we determine exactly what the right sort of syntax is for how that needs to be represented, we can just use a default value instead of having to have a whole column for it, right? So that's another way to deal, since we know everything that's being imported is gonna be non-taxable. All right, so now the next thing I always do before I actually import it, even though I'm pretty sure it's ready to go, is I'm gonna go to review. And then over here under more, we're gonna go to preview. Cause that's gonna show me, it's gonna again, pull information out of my file and show me where in the ultimate form where it's going, it's going to appear. So it's just a way of confirming that, uh, that it's right. And I'm pretty sure this is how that works because when something's a checkbox, generally speaking, in a database program, then that means it's gonna read it as true or false, right? If it's checked off, it's true. If it's not checked off, it's false. So I believe this is going to be the right way to do that. All right, so it looks like everything's gonna land exactly where we need it to. Let's Did the uh, sub account show up correctly because it looked like there was a thing that said is a uh, sub of some other thing and it wasn't checked. It shows here where it has the parent colon the sub. I believe this will work this way because the other way to do it is I could have them each in separate columns and then I would have one of the columns mapped as the is sub account. But let's find out. Maybe I might be wrong. Yeah. Right, but in my experience, you can always do it this way and, and SASNet will know how to parse that out. So let's find out. So now I just click upload, let it do its thing. All right, both records failed, perfect. <laughs> All right, so, and so it didn't like the, so that may be the exact issue here because it said the parent or reference is invalid. This selection can only be a category. It doesn't look like anything else failed. So let's go back and fix that one thing. So here's, and watch this trick. So I'm first I'm gonna insert a column between B and C, right? And then we're gonna go data, text to columns, delimited, next, in the other box, I'll put a colon so it knows exactly how to split them up because that's how I arranged it, right? Next, finish. So this is sub account of, right? Because it's the parent. And this is the item. 
Now let's go re remap this and it should work, right? And you can imagine how that little delimiter trick would save you time if you had 8,000 line items in the spreadsheet. And trust me, I've worked with files like that. It's a huge time saver. Um, all right, so let's go back here and let's go back. And yes, I know I'm gonna lose all my data. It's a terrible day. We'll click back again and we'll clear uploads and go back to my drive and drag fun with QBO. I should do that. That'd be a cool idea for a webinar. I'm gonna do a webinar called fun with QBO and just like teach all kinds of little tips and tricks. I just have to think of what would be some cool ones, things that you don't normally learn in everybody else's webinars. Keyboard shortcuts. Keyboard short, yeah, I don't use them in QuickBooks Online. I was, keyboard shortcuts in desktop were like a religion for me. I, I ate them, I slept with them, I breathed them. And in QBO, I just don't use them. I don't, I, when I've looked, and i tell you why, I think a lot of it is because oftentimes it requires too many fingers to do the shortcuts. Like I can't do them quickly. You know, it's like you need shift, control, alt, and then like three keys on the keyboard to get something. And it's like at that point, it's faster to just click on it, right? At least that's what I've found. That's been my experience with the QBO keyboard shortcuts. So anyway, um, so nothing comes up when I'm searching sub accounts. Let's go child. Maybe it will come up that way. And sometimes we're just going to have to go through the list and figure out how to map this part. So this is going to be the parent account. So there it is, parent product or service. If I had searched parent, that probably would have worked. And then this is going to be the actual item. Uh, uh, name, name of the item. All right. So now we have name, sub account of. Let's try it. By the way, who was that that called out that? possible problem. That was you, Janet. Thank you, Janet. Yep. And look, now that, see, Janet, you're hired. Bada bing, bada boom, close and upload. It still didn't check it though. Is that maybe there needs to be a column for a true false? I don't know. I don't think so. Let's find out. Because it definitely had the name in the right place. And again. Parent reference invalid. The selection can only be a category. Hmm. Does the perennial grasses have to be in there as a category? And. Well, that the, is. That's the parent, right? Oh, I had it. Oh, I had it set up in the. When I set it up, I put like trees and shrubs for the in the category. Then I put another category like maple, and then I put another one underneath it. I don't know if I can do that with this. You lost me on that one. When oh. you when you're doing you, I think what you had done was you had it the way I originally did it, where you had the parent colon and the sub, right? Yep. But we got the error, so I said, and, and Janet pointed out that there was a separate field and checkbox for the parent item. So I, that's what I just did on this last round is I split them up and had the parent in one column, mapped that as the parent, and the, and the sub in another column and mapped that as the actual item, right? Yeah, but I put it in the, there's another drop down that says category that I made a special category. Oh, I, you know okay. And that's what it's saying. So this can only be a category. I, and you know what, there's a setting where you can change that. That's right. Because originally when QBO started doing items like this, you didn't have sub items. You only had categories and items. And I guess Sassant is still sort of only working with it at that level. So here's what we need to do. Good point. So I'm going to take this. First of all, we're going to edit this. And because I can't have a category and an item with the same name. So I'll just call this delete me for now. And while I'm in this dialogue, I might as well just go create the category. Save. Now it won't let me do it until I've saved this with a different name. So save and close. Okay. And then we'll just edit any of these and create the category. And I hate how it organizes. Doesn't this make it look like real estate and something I sell are also in that category? 
That's why, by the way, as soon as I create a category, everything has to get a category because this is very, very confusing to me. And by the way, I don't want consulting in that category anyway. I want it going back to admin. Okay, so now let's try it. Let's go upload failed lines because this time I didn't have to change anything in the file. I'm changing it on the QBO side. So now I might be able to do this. By the way, this is also why it's a good idea to test your mappings out with just like two lines in the file. So you don't sit there waiting for an hour to get the results because, and it imported successfully now. Because otherwise I'd have to wait till it went through, you know, 80 lines of items before it gave me the errors. It makes you wait for the whole thing to process. The good news about that is it will import the ones that do work, but it won't import the ones that don't. So this got a successful result. Let's go take a look. Uh, just refresh the page. Okay, and what I'll do now, I love this part, is that I can filter it by the category so I can focus only on that. Okay, and here they are. They all got in here perfectly. So Sue, that's your answer. In the import file, you need two separate columns, one for the parent, one for the child, right? So no more parent colon sub. That's the way it used to work in like desktop, right? So we need two separate columns in that. The, um, the non-inventory type designation has to be formatted exactly like this. It's capital N, capital I, one word, no dash, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So fix that and fix the column thing. And I think everything else should work perfectly. That was fun, yeah. right? Yeah, it was good. Thank you very much. That really helped to think through how it, to think through the problems. That's how you learn. Yep, 100%. That is the best way. That's why they call me the nerd. <laughs> All right, now we did have one other question. What first step should I take to migrate my client to QBO from desktop. And this came from Darren. Is Darren even with us today? No. Did Darren give me a date in which to answer this? He has not. I need to make that required. <laughs> um, well, I can answer it and he can catch the recording, I suppose. Um, so, all right, what steps should I take to migrate my client to QBO? So one of the things, and they, speaking of the QuickBooks Online certification, one of the things they'll tell you uh, very definitely is you want to get all your bank and credit card accounts reconciled to the most recent month possible in desktop before you do it, right? Just, and then you want to go through, you want to do kind of like the way I show people how to do a review of a company file. You want to do that in desktop. You want to just go line by line through the balance sheet, make sure everything looks accurate, clean up the books first in desktop, right? So that's always what you want to do is do your cleanup process in QuickBooks desktop, clean up whatever you can there before doing the migration. I also will always have the conversation with the client around the possibility of not migrating the data in QBO. Oftentimes migrating to QBO is the perfect opportunity to decide not to migrate the data so we can actually build a brand new clean company data file. And we can, there's all kinds of ways we can archive the desktop information so that we can access it should we need it. But I love take, it's a perfect time, a perfect opportunity to start clean, right? Because oftentimes I would, I, would, I would go as far as I'll stick my neck out and, and say always, always it's going to be the case that by the time I'm looking at migrating a desktop file to QBO, that desktop file has probably been around for a while and it's probably accumulated a lot of junk that we just don't need, right? And it's easy enough to grab what I need from the lists because I can go into desktop and I can export my customer list and my vendor list and then work with the client. I can stick that in a Google Sheets file so that I can collaboratively work with my client in real time and say, you go ahead and just delete the line items that represent vendors and customers that we no longer need, right? We can also take the opportunity to clean up the chart of accounts, right? Because oftentimes that's accumulated a lot of junk, right? And especially since QBO has the limits on the amount of accounts you can have now. Um, another good reason to clean up that chart of accounts and may, maybe minimize the number of accounts. A lot of times we have accounts that could be merged, right? Like I was just having this conversation with somebody earlier today that um, uh, he's, he's, um, it's a company that owns properties, right? Real estate company. And um, we, we were talking about the chart of accounts and we got to the utilities and he said, do I need sub accounts for this? And I said, no, 
you really don't, right? You can really just put it all in utilities and then I can run the P&L, click on the utilities amount and I can total that by payee and I can very quickly see what's water, what's power, what's gas, what's whatever else I've gotten there, right? And so especially when we're trying to keep that minimal, you know, that's a perfect example of something we can consolidate and clean up. Same thing with travel. I don't necessarily need to know on the P&L exactly how much was airfare, hotel, lodging, and Uber rides, right? I can just have one account for all travel and then I can drill into the details if I need them. And so I've been doing a lot and I've been doing a lot more of that um, ever since, especially Intuit imposed those limitations on us. And I don't wanna have to go to QuickBooks Online Advanced just because I have a lot of accounts, right? That's just dumb. It's like a dumb reason to have to do it. And I got really mad at them because then they, I felt like they were insulting our intelligence because their answer to that you know, issue was, oh, well, our experience shows us that companies with that many accounts are just more robust and they need more robust features. And I'm like, you know what? I can decide that for my clients. I don't need you to tell me when it's time for that. Don't tell, I'll disavow any knowledge that I said this if you talk to anybody from Intuit. Don't, if I get a call from Allison Ball later today, <laughs> Seth said, I'm not kidding. I've gotten those calls. They, every once in a while, I get a call from Allison and she's like spanks me like, Seth, don't do that. So, and I love my friends at Intuit and they frequently remind me that I do have their ear so I can always give them that feedback. And I did, I gave them that feedback and I didn't like their answer. So anyway, bottom line, we can keep the chart of accounts simple. So migrating to QBO from desktop is the perfect time to have that conversation with the client and say, you know, maybe it's a good idea to start clean right? We've probably got a lot of junk we can do without. Let's start over, right? We can reconstruct from January till now. Not too bad. We have SAS and we can import stuff quickly, right? We can reconstruct the AR and the AP easily enough. We have the data in desktop that we can piece it back together, whatever we need. So we have the tools and the power now to do these things quickly and efficiently, right? And then it makes your job easier because now you have a, it's like, it's like, it's like putting a new engine in the car, right? It gets rid of all that. On, on the recreating the AR and AP by importing it. Um, what if you're totally revamping the item list because that's what's causing all the problems in the des desktop pile? Yeah, you're not going to import the AR necessarily. Um, okay. it's, it's too much of a pain in the neck. And I think that was one of the other questions, uh, Susan, that you had, because we talked about revamping the item list, which is fine. So you revamp the item list and you can import the invoices. That's easy. Right, I didn't get to show you that today. So remind me, we can do it next mm -hmm. week. Um, so we can, uh, we're gonna import the invoices, but I'm really, uh, normally I'm gonna reconstruct the rest of the AR just through the banking when I do the bank feeds and catch that up again, right? And so as I download the deposits or import the deposits, then I need the information for whose payments were included in that deposits. And I know it sounds like a lot of work, but it's gonna be a lot cleaner than trying to map a file that says, here's a payment amount and here's the invoice number that it paid. And especially if you have partial payments, it just gets messy even trying to use SAS Ant to import it. So I've chosen not to import the payments by and large. Absolute worst case scenario, what you could do if it's really just a lot of volume of invoices and payments that you're dealing with is I can import all the invoices, right? And then I can bring, let me think about this. I want to make sure I explain this properly. Basically what I'm getting at is I can bring all the money that came in through like a sales clearing account, mm -hmm. right? And call, and set that up as another current asset. And then as I know which invoices got paid, I can just kind of pull money out of the clearing account and apply it to the AR that way. So oftentimes that can prove to be more efficient and cleaner than trying to rematch payments and invoices. But to be honest, in most cases, what I've done is I've actually just reconstructed the payment side of the AR manually like that. Because I can go into QuickBooks Desktop and I can look at an, a given invoice or I, I really work backwards. So I see a deposit in the bank account whose payments were in that deposit. I can get that data out of the desktop file and I just go in and receive payments. And, you know, it's a bit of work, but it's clean. It's worth it to me to put in that extra effort to get the new set of books and records really nice and clean that way. So it's sort of like I often say, you put in the time now, it, it saves you a lot of time and trouble later on. So that, uh, you know, and that way when you're done with the cleanup job, when you, I always make a note of the, um, the sort of uh, the, the cutoff date. When did I start doing this? Because that's the 
that's the kind of cutoff date in desktop where I basically I want to make sure I can get back to a balance sheet that looks exactly like desktops. I might have different accounts in there because I've cleaned up the chart of accounts, but bottom line, total assets should agree, total liability should agree, and total equity should certainly agree on that sort of as of date. So I always make sure that I bookmark that as of date somewhere because I know when I'm reconstructing the data from let's say January through May now in QBO, then I might May 30th is a good cutoff obviously to do and say, all right, I'm going to get the books caught up through May 30th and, and then run that balance sheet and make sure that that balance sheet agrees, at least in terms of the total sections to what was in desktop as of the same day. Right. So that's, that's how I would do that. And, you know, again, you're going to charge the client for it. You know, first you're going to get the client to agree because it's going to make everybody's life easier. Most clients I'm surprised, you know, do agree that, and they're actually excited about the idea of just having a nice new clean file. It's, kind of, it's like getting a new car, right? You know, it's just going to run much better than what you've been, that clunker they've been driving around for so long, right? Um, and then some of them may be a little put off when you say, oh, and by the way, here's what it's going to cost, but it definitely should cost. You know, it's a service you're providing and it's not part of the scope of normal bookkeeping when you have to do this. And there's value in it and there's a benefit for them you know, which is that they're going to get a nice new clean company file, a well-oiled machine that, uh, you know, it should, it, you know, they should be willing to pay for it. If they're not willing to pay for it, then, you know, they can stick with the old clunker, right? So uh, that's my story and I'm sticking to it there. But bringing over the current invoices, if the items on the invoices have gotten changed, how does that? So you, what you have to do is you have, you have old item list, new item list and you have to create a mapping in Excel, right? And you can, so you create a mapping in Excel so that when you're reconstructing the invoices in SASANT to import them, you basically, so you're gonna have an export, let's say from QuickBooks desktop, that's got all the detailed invoice information, right? And then you do a VLOOKUP that's taking the old invoice item and it's doing a VLOOKUP on your table that you've created with the mapping to bring in the new invoice item. And so once you write that formula once, it's a quick copy and paste, and your whole invoice file is prepped for import, basically, right? So that's just a little bit of work creating. Yeah, so you have to create the mapping. You have to track it. So if we're, you know, whatever items we're eliminating, we have to know what, what items are replacing that, right? If we're merging items effectively into a fewer list of items, then we, again, we need a table in our spreadsheet that has that mapping from old item to new. Right, and I do that with the chart of accounts as well. If we're cleaning up the chart of accounts and we're bringing in old transactions that had data from the old chart of accounts and we have to do a very similar thing where we have, it's just a two column tab in the spreadsheet for the chart of accounts mapping. I call it COA mapping and I call it item mapping and so on and so forth. So you have to do that for any list that you've cleaned up. Customers and vendors, you shouldn't have this issue because you're either taking the customer or you don't. Presumably, if you're not taking the customer or vendor with you, it's because they weren't, they're not going to be there in the old data. The reason you're leaving them out is because you haven't used them in a long time and don't need them anymore, right? So, it's, so that's kind of like it's either on or off. Either we're getting the customer or the vendor or we're not. So there shouldn't be a need for mapping there. But your chart of accounts and your item list, you'll definitely need a mapping tab from old to new. I wish okay. you could do an example of that. Uh, not today, because I do have to run. I'm actually, we're a little over already. Um, but next week, definitely. Just uh, remind cool. me or submit it in the form. And uh, this is great. I would much rather be spending these hours going over these kinds of questions that you guys have, because otherwise I'm just going to make something up and say, all right, this is what we're doing today, right? Yeah, this is cool stuff. All right, awesome. So I will... Uh, I owe you guys two recordings. For those of you who are in the Bulletproof Bookkeeping course, I owe you last week's recording. And then this one, of course, is for everyone. So I'll get this up in the next day or two. Somebody's already emailed me going, where's my recording? I'm kidding. <laughs> it wasn't like that. She was very nice. She just asked me if the recording was up yet. All right. I will see you. Have a wonderful afternoon. Stay home. Stay safe. I'll see you tomorrow or something. Or Thank Friday. you very much. <laughs> Bye. Great.